Today we are doing a code review for a piece of code that one of my viewers submitted. Oh God. Why? The viewer submitted a program that they wrote called Random Character Generator. It's basically a program that you give it a number and a character set and it'll generate a random string for you. You can think kind of like a password generator. Today we're going to be grading this code on four primary categories. So functional, meaning does the code actually function? Is the code understandable? Meaning when I read the code, can I easily interpret what the code does? Does it have good comments? Does it have good function names and variable names? Is the code maintainable? Meaning that if this code were given to somebody else, could they keep it alive? Is there a lot of technical debt in the code? And then finally, is the code expandable? Is there an obvious API via a header file or something else that allows me to add features to this code or is it just messy spaghetti code? So let's get into the first part and see is the code functional. Now, when I get a piece of code, I'm looking at basic things like the structure of the repo to give me an, an idea of code smell. If they actually organize their code into multiple files and they put that inside of a directory and it has a make file, I'm already getting a good feeling that this may be a well-structured project. When you're writing code in C, you want all of your different items that have a purpose to have their own C file. So the functionality is obviously separated. So someone else reading the code can generally guess what's gonna happen in these files. But before we actually look at those files, I wanna see, will this code compile? The viewer did a really good job of specifying in the readme how to actually go about compiling this. So you have to sudo apt install lib ncurses dev, and then you get to just go ahead and make the program via make install. The project is good so far. And again, we get no errors, we get no warnings. They put W all, which is another good indicator that they maybe tested their code as well. Uh, so they create all of the output files via their C files, and then they compile that together to create RCG. So from a building standpoint, I didn't have to do anything special to build it. It just built on its own. Awesome. Let's go ahead and run it and see if it actually behaves as intended. So enter the length desired. Let's generate an eight character string. Uh, let's see. Select the option specified below to generate lower, upper, and numbers. Okay, cool. So I got lower and upper. Do I get a number? Okay, cool. I got lower, upper, and numbers. So I can recreate it again. Interesting. So I don't think the R uh, functionality is working in this program. So I'll take that as a note. Repeat only works once, question mark. And we'll ask them about that later. But other than that, it seems pretty good. So if I do, I want to do 10 characters that are only symbols yeah, and I'm getting only symbols here. So, okay. From a functionality standpoint, minus the, the multiple repeats or the multiple recreates, it seems like it's pretty functional. So I'm going to grade this eight out of 10. Seems good to me. It does function. So let's actually get into the code review now and figure out, is this code understandable? Cause someone else who has to look at this code, know what it does. I didn't get a huge sense of confidence from the code understandability, if it's understandable, based off of this. The, 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 the naming of the functions, array size, array type, array cases, array output, it kind of tells me what's going to happen based off of me running the program. But if I hadn't ran the program and I had to read this, I wouldn't really know what's going on. Also, there's not a lot of comments here, so I'm losing hope on the, the understandability piece. Let's check this out. So let's figure out where um, array size is uh, declared, uh, probably in array, array size. Here we go. Take a look at this code here. Um, I'm not seeing a ton of comments. That's my only complaint so far other than the naming. So what you want to do here is typically like function array size pointer, which is a, you know, a pointer to the array object. The reason we want to do these formats is it gives the reader a very obvious indication of what they can expect from the code. They wouldn't have to go line by line and figure out what the function does. They can just read this here and get an idea of what this function's API is, right? What the input's supposed to be, what the output's supposed to be. If you don't have this, there are two problems. One, I now have to go through every single line and figure out what's going on here. And also without these headers like this, writing documentation for this code is pretty hard, right? If you format your comments in the right format, th there are programs like Doxygen, for example, that will automatically create docs for you just based off of comments. Now, a lot of comments are happening inside the code either. Like I want to have a, a comment here that says, you know, what is the case I'm handling for here? If the user supplies zero or something like that. Um, and again, you may be able to infer this comment from the code itself, but just something to think about. Uh, we print w value unknown and we do this while pointer length is less than one. Okay, so they're making sure that we get out of this function with the array pointer set to greater than one, which is a decent way to do it. So we go what we do array size and then array type. 
array type. So this is us querying the input from the user for the size, and then we did the same thing for the type, right? So we read in a half word pointer type. And I know, I know I'm clicking with Vim. Just don't, uh, <laughs> just, just ignore me. I'm trying to get this code review done. Uh, array type, select the option specified below to generate an ascending order. Yeah, okay, so it just takes the type from the user as a number. So mm, this depends very heavily on the user putting the number in the right order, right? So it says specify it in ascending order. And then if I put, for example, if I wanted to have a lower and a numbers, but I put three one, it likely wouldn't work. And we're gonna figure out how that works here in a second. Okay, so we go through that, we do type and then cases. <sighs> yeah, oh God. Okay, so this piece of code is where I start to have a little bit of issues, right? So the, the problem here is that there are a lot of magic numbers. So for, for a, couple, a couple of reasons, I don't like this and I'll, I'll explain why. The first reason is as a reader of this code, I don't really know what any of these cases are for. And I, I'm aware that they come from array.c. I'm aware now after reading the code and using it a lot that it has to do with the one, two, three, or maybe one and three. And they use that to switch what type of pointer we have and then use that to create our array. The problem with this is that if I were to change the specification or the API where I want to change how the type variable is handled. If I want to change what type number the array needs to function, doing it like this with these magic numbers makes it very hard to update this code. And then also too, more magic numbers, right? So this 26, this 52, I don't know what they're doing here. I think I know from, from some backhand knowledge like about what this program does, this is probably the lower and upper range of like some ASCII characters, right? But again, this makes it very difficult to add functionality because if for whatever reason we had to change these numbers, the rest of the code would not be correct. Yeah, so another issue with the understandability piece too is I wouldn't be so glued to this array uppercase notation like in your naming. I would do like array gen random character pointer. This whole, um, this whole array uppercase word thing, it doesn't do a lot for me in describing like what actually is going on with the code. Let's keep going. So we call array creation, which I'm assuming is in creation.c. And then array creation has, right, exactly. It's, you have your range, which is the inputs subtracted from each other. And that's probably selecting the ASCII range of the values that you're allowed to select from. So we generate an array that is equal to the range minus plus one. Yeah, okay. So they're generating a range of characters that you can choose from and then putting that into a array that we can select from and then we use that to actually randomly get a character yeah okay this makes sense so we use array creation to create our selectable array and then from there we do array size and array output so that's probably the final function in here array output yeah so we do oh wait no array output is last array cases array creation um interesting Oh, array random array sort. From an understandable perspective, you need to use more comments. Just comment your code, please. Uh, comments and then also stop using magic numbers. I'll give this a six out of 10. You do a decent job of naming your functions and your types, um, but there's just no comments in this code and there's no documentation on the functions and then also the, the use of magic numbers is pretty bad. So that's just, that's the major issue I have with the understandable. I know there was one piece they wanted me to comment on. Uh, they wanted me to see if their source of randomness, their SRAND was secure. So they SRAND pointer size. And they say that pointer size equals TS TVNSEC times pointer count minus pointer count. Why? Yeah, man, I, th I think you were better off just doing this. If you want to make your, your thing random, you just do ts.tvnsec, right? Because now what's happening is regardless of whatever this math turns into, you're seeding your randomness off of the nanosecond time, which I think is the right answer because you, you can't predict the nanosecond time of the processor, right? Whereas if you like, for example, srand time, 
right? Like this is, I know if I can figure out what time you made the string, I know what the string is. But then also there's an issue where like, if you're doing any math on the, the nanosecond time, you're adding additional information to that number that is predictable by the user, right? Like if I know how long your string is, I can predict a, like I could, I, I know information about your seed and can possibly reverse the, the randomness. So you want to always keep this S rand to a number that's as random as possible. So if you can get entropy off of the CPU via W random, if you can read the nanosecond time of the processor, if you can read the jiffy to the kernel, all that good stuff, I would say use that. So you were, you were almost on the money there. I would just say keep it simple and use the nsec time. Maintainable. Yeah, I mean, so I think based off of the number of magic numbers that I saw, me adding additional features to this, I would know how to do it. Like I could do it in this function. I could add maybe a case, you know, where I say case two or, you know, one, two, three, five, or maybe five is an additional feature that I added. But the magic numbers make it very hard to keep this like a smooth code base. What I would want to do instead of this is instead of treating each input as a character and then using that as like an integer, you could do create an enum type def enum type t and we'll do lower is one and we'll say type upper is lifted by two right and then so you take this put it in your header file and then in the array.c you convert this number here the number that they give you to your type t right so let's say like type t user input and then you, you figure you're at a function that parses this input into this. And then from there, all you have to do is check all of the flags in this thing and then add it to your, your range. Right. So it's just a way of making it so that instead of having like case one, you would say uh, pointer type and type lower. Right. And then so now what's happening is I'm writing code that isn't using magic numbers. If I, if I want to change the type lower to do something else, I could just change the number here. I create one single location for the type to be defined as opposed to here, where if for some reason the number 26 in your code changes, it cascades down to the rest of your code. It makes this very hard. And again, if, and if there were multiple source files that depend on this code, like you are just up a creek because you, you have to go through and find all of them and change them and figure out which ones depend on each other. It's just a huge pain in the ass. I, I would go to a place where you're either converting your numbers into an enum or you're converting your numbers into a define, right? So define type lower five. So maintainable, same thing, six out of 10. Um, use less magic numbers, uh, create enums to represent values. And then expandable, right? So this is again, is the code in a place where I can take the API that it exposes and add something to it. So let's go look at the, the array C or the array dot H. Uh, include or right, uh, H and figure out, is there a way that I can add something to this? Right? So again, they use comments here, which is really, really cool. Maybe I should have read this before reading the rest of the code. I would prefer though, that the documentation for the functions was done in the actual declaration though. This is more, that's more likely to be a place where someone's going to audit as opposed to the, the dot H file, but this is a pretty good job. So I'll actually add one point to the understandable. There are comments, just not where I expected them. Um, yeah, awesome. Okay. So based on this, I would find, I could probably add functionality to this pretty clearly. They, they'd have a pretty robust structure and the functionality that tells me what, you know, each function does. So I could go back through and figure out how to add my own function to this. I would say this code is expandable. So what do we got? We got eight, six, seven, eight. So it's 27, 27 out of 40, not bad. That's not bad at all. 40 out of 40 is perfect code and zero out of 40 isn't code. So 27 out of 40 is not bad at all. I would say my major issues were functionality that repeat didn't really work that well. Um, if it was it understandable, you need more comments in your code. Was it maintainable kind of, but again, the magic numbers up here made it very hard to maintain this code base and is it expandable. I think you did a pretty good job defining your API. So that's my first code review. If you guys like that, do me a favor and go watch this other code review that I did. It's over there somewhere. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one.